This video is going to review the structure of a program. So remember the highest level of the outline is to say public class and then name your class. And you open and close your curly brace and everything for the class is going to get defined in between those curly braces. Now in your class header you are going to make sure that you start with an uppercase and you're not going to put any punctuation at the end of it. Instead, it's going to look to see where your class starts and stops by the curly braces. Now, if your program is called class name, then you would save your program as class name.java. Now, remember conventions are things that people agree upon. So remember that a class name will start with an uppercase. And if you have multiple words in your class name, you do not put spaces. Instead, you just capitalize each word after the initial word. Now, inside a class, you may or may not have a main method. Early on in our course, we're going to have main methods because remember, in the main method, that's where your program execution begins and ends. And so public static void main, string square brackets args is standard. And again, to indicate the start and end of your main method, you use curly braces. Just like at the class name, with our main method, you do not put any semicolon at the end of it. Inside your main method or inside your other methods, you might have some variable declarations, so int, double, string, etc. And then you would have various statements that indicates what you want to do when you run your program. For your statements and for your variable declarations, it's important that you make sure that they do end with a semicolon. Now, it is possible to make other methods. Now, this is an example of a static void method. Notice the word static, notice the word void. Inside this, you would have a method name, so this would be a method other than your main method, in which you have variables, possibly, statements, and then in a void method, you may or may not put the word return. It's less important for a void method to have the word return. If you were inside the class, but in a different method, you could call this method, and the way you do that is you just Call the method by its name and then here you notice we have open close parentheses with no, no parameters and so you would do that followed by a semicolon. So in general a class will have variables and methods. Now a class will start with an uppercase however methods will start with the lowercase but just like with classes for each additional word you will just capitalize the each additional word. Variables are going to start with a lowercase. You can notice that a variable will not have any parentheses at the end of it, but a variable does have the data type that represents it in memory. So num can store doubles, first name can reference strings. Constants will be, by convention, all uppercase. So we see pi with math.py, but you can also declare your own constants. Even though putting all caps is a convention, what really makes sure that your value never changes is the word final in front of the data type. So if I say double rate equals 2.75, just by capitalizing it doesn't automatically make it a constant. The word final makes a variable a true constant because it means that during the course of the program you're not going to change it. So let's look at this class right here. So you'll notice our class is called new line and we have a method that's static and void called new line. These are two different things, right? This is a class with a capital N and a capital L and this is a method with a lowercase n and a capital L. These are two different identifiers because Java is case sensitive. In other words, there is a difference between a lowercase and an uppercase in the mind of the compiler. All right, 
So in this method, all we do is do system.out.println. It's just going to essentially move to a new line. And that's all that happens in that method. We have another method called three lines. Now in reality, this is not a good habit to put the call all on the same line, but for the sake of space, they are. So each time new line is called, it comes up here and it prints a blank line essentially. And so once it's done, then your method is done. But those methods are well and good, but when you click run, where your computer does is it comes here to start. And you'll notice what it does first is it prints line one. Then it moves on to the next line of code in the main method, which is three lines. So three lines is going to temporarily move over here for control, and it's going to execute the three lines method. And the first thing that happens in the three lines method is new line is going to be called. And when new line is called, we print a new line. And then we come back here, new line is called, so we print a new line. And the new line is called one more time, so we print a new line. And that's the end of the three lines method, so we come back to our main method to pick up where we left off, which is at this print line statement. So what you end up with basically is line one, and then three blank lines, and then line two. So if you want to try on your own, put that code into an existing program. Try and call it in your main method and see what happens. Also, you can try to create a method that will output five blank lines. You can name your method, and then just like how this three lines method called new line, you can also have your new five lines method called new line. All right, so if you feel like you want to try it out and actually see for yourself what happens, just be mindful when you copy this into JGrasp or Replit. These quotation marks are not the quotation marks that are, um, your compiler likes to see, so you might have to type back over those for your compiler to recognize this as a string literal, just FYI. All right, so that's a review of a class structure.